My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions. We're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 2,240 subscribers in over 80 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to anyone outside of Aspen Now without your express consent. Welcome back to the Reboot series, everyone. Today we'll be talking about the SLA retroactive pause condition. Uh, we're going to take a look at a couple of SLAs and discuss uh, how to set up the retroactive pause condition, why would we use it, when to use it, um, and basically what the, uh, the effects are um, that result from that in terms of uh, the time calculation that occurs within the SLAs. One thing I wanted to mention, uh, I'm sure everyone's seen it, but you can upgrade to New York now in, your, uh, in your, each of your personal developer instances. So if you want to give that a whirl, um, it is available there. As you can see here, I haven't even made it to Madrid yet, so I guess i got to um, get moving on that. Okay, so today we're going to look at a couple of uh, definitions that I set up on the incident table. Um, I talked about this at knowledge that probably 90% of your SLA problems are going to be on the incident table. Is people like tracking things like, you know, how long does it take to assign a ticket and how long does it take to resolve it right so what retroactive pause does is allows us to pause based on a past condition so as you can see here we have retroactive start checked if we don't have retroactive start checked then guess what we can't use retroactive pause and uh, I will say this I've seen some stacks out there where I guess this is disabled or something, and they're trying to use one without the other. So try not to break this uh, in your own uh, instance out there. Okay, so retroactive start, we have it going off of the created date. Remember, just as a review, the retroactive start is basically a timestamp, and we're picking a date time field here on when we want this SLA to start the calculation, right? So this is like our start time. Retroactive pause is saying, hey, look, something could have happened in the past even before the start conditions were met. And if so, if it's in this pause condition right here, and we'll see here I have here state is on hold, or I did an or clause, right? So it's different than just saying or. Or the assignment group is audit manager. So if the audit manager's um, group is selected in that assignment group box, then one thing we we'll have to watch out for is you know how this gets calculated later on because this could have been um, if we look at our start condition here assignment group isn't in here so basically it could have been assigned um, before the state became in progress and the priority became one and uh, it should calculate that after this SLA fires so um, that's our retroactive one and our stop condition here is a state is one of and I do resolve close cancel sometimes people do active is, is false um, but I'm kind of used to dealing with custom applications and sometimes states are created that are not you would assume that they're inactive but they're active so I just I just put in the actual states themselves alright so if we take a look at our non retroactive pause SLA uh, definition here we'll see here we don't have retroactive start check that we could do one of these right yeah, in fact, let's modify it like that so that way we're not using retroactive pause. And again, same conditions. We'll take a look at our stop condition here. Re resolve, closed, canceled. Um, and notice right here, resume conditions are not met. I'm going to change this to pause conditions are not met. So that way it resumes. But I will I'll adjust that later on on both of these. And we'll see how they run. Okay, so let's see here. I'm going to get rid of that one. That one's for another video later. And we have an incident here. So looks like, has this been created yet? Yeah, so we're going to make a copy of this one. And we're going to see, we're going to put it first in new. Right, actually, we're going to put it in progress, right? Yeah, let's put it in progress. Um, no, you know what? I want to do new first. Let's do a save here. Now nothing should fire, right? Because it has to be in progress, the state. So if we scroll down here, great. Nothing has fired just yet. Now if we do in progress, OK, 
guess what happens? It fires, right? So both of them will fire here. And we'll see here actual lapse time. It's basically the same thing that's running. Now let's let's make a copy of this. Let's just say that we put it immediately on hold. Let's say our state model, so to speak, wasn't set up correctly. We're going to put this on hold in the beginning. All right, so now we have here this thing's on hold. Um, it's not even in progress yet. So now what we can do is we can change this to in progress and hit save. Okay, sorry, my instance is moving a little bit slow today. All right, so now we're going to see here both both the stages are in progress. Now we're going to see here the one that has the retroactive pause SLA. See how it calculated that 17 seconds there? So it's basically saying, aha, we recognize the fact that it was in that on hold state because when we go back here, even though the SLA was not running at the time, it met one of these conditions here that the state was on hold. So it is respecting that. Now this one here, the non-retroactive, it's not, right? Because guess what we're doing? There is no retroactive pause going on. So now let's go ahead and let's change some of this stuff here. So I'm going to take this retroactive one. I'm going to change this when to resume to resume conditions are met. I'm going to leave it blank. And I want to show you what it does here. So let's go ahead, change that. And now we're going to make a copy of this one. Whenever this thing opens up, apologies. Instance is slow today. Let's copy this incident. And now let's do the same scenario. We're going to put it in on hold first. Now we're going to click save. Nothing should fire, right? Great. No SLAs have fired. Let's go down a second time and check OK. Now let's change it to in progress. And you know what? I bet that thing fires in pause status. I'll give you a little explanation as to why. Yep, sure enough. Our retroactive pause SLA is still on pause. Now it's in progress. And you're probably saying, wow, why is it stuck in pause? Well, I'll tell you why. If we take a look at our retroactive pause, or our pause condition, excuse me, in this tab, we're going to see here our when to resume is resume conditions are met. Guess what? We didn't fill any resume conditions in. So if your SLA gets stuck in pause, you're definitely going to want to check this when to resume condition out. So what can we do then? We can put this back to pause conditions are not met. Hit save. And now let's see if it corrects it here or if we have to run what we call SLA repair. So we have it paused. And now what I'm going to do is, I don't know, I'm just going to put it back and on hold. And if it doesn't, I can run SLA repair on it. And that'll correct that. Now both of them are paused. Great. That's what we want. Now let's see if we put them back into, or if we put the state back into in progress, what happens? Okay, it looks like it corrected it, right? Because the SLA is still active. It's still tapping into the SLA definition. So now we, we got it back out of there in progress. If we really needed to um, do some, what I call surgery on this thing, what I would do is open this in a new window. And at this point, you're going to unfilter it out. And then you see here, repair all filtered SLAs. So basically the scenario would be like, you know, if it made it to production, these things are stuck in pause. What I like to do is this. I like to take the incidents and then export them to XML. And then I'll put them, I'll take them from prod and I'll throw them down into dev. And the reason I'll do that is so that way I can play with them in dev as a developer or as an admin, right? And it's not going to affect anything going on in production while I'm working on the fix. So that's kind of a you know additional tip I'll give you to um, working with these things. Try not to do anything in prod, right? Just take it down via XML, um, the incidents and the task SLAs, um, and then bring them down there. 
um, and that'll, that'll help you when you're troubleshooting these things. So now we have, um, you know, if we want to add another condition to this, um, we have here assignment group as audit managers. We could also do something like, I don't know, let's add another or condition here. Assign to, I don't know, we'll just say Jason. Let's see if it finds me. There we go, Jason Miami Miller, excellent. And now let's let's just go ahead and practice one more of these, and I'll show you another another place where retroactive comes in handy too. So let's um, let's go ahead and make a copy of this. Okay, great. So now we'll see here's the assignment group. I'm not sure if I'm in this group. And if not, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear myself out there. Great. Hopefully that one's eligible. If not, I'll have to go back and change it to another one. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Jason Miamela. Perfect. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and save that record. And I think I'll just put the. Yeah, we'll just put it in progress. And now let's see what happens. Should have that retroactive one starting paused. Yep, sure enough, which is fine, right? Because it fired it. It's taking the the start time is the created date, which is uh, let's see if it's still up here. I guess we'd have to. Let's go ahead and look at this in the list. All right, so I created it. Yeah, 12, 16, 36. Perfect. And then when we go into the incident, 12, 16, 36. Perfect. So it did what we wanted to do. And it fired paused because guess why? So two things were happening here, right? It met the start conditions. Priority is one. State is in progress, but it also met the pause condition. So don't be alarmed um, if it fires in a pause state, um, unless that's something you didn't want it to do. So if it's, if it's not what you wanted it to do, um, then you're going to have to go ahead and revise these conditions here. So now at this point, if I assign it to someone else, I don't know if Abraham Lincoln's available, but I'll just pick another person here. Let's just pick good old Teddy Taylor. Great. Um, now we'll hit save. And we'll see it's back to in progress, right? So and then we can take a look at our business pause duration. Right here we have, and then there's also um, feel, I believe it's actual pause duration. Or pause duration. There we go. Yeah. So it's pause duration. And just remember, if you're running these with a schedule, then you're going to always want to look at business. So I think I'm running these both as 24 seven, which, you know, life would be really easy if they're all 24 seven, right? But they're in real life, they're not. But here I'd have no schedule selected. So just be cognizant of that fact that you're going to want to use the business, um, field instead of just a regular pause duration on that uh, when you're when you're taking a closer look and then another thing you can do is if you want to take a look at the SLAs like the timeline right which is kind of a handy feature so you can you can come in here this is like a bunch of gobbledygook if you ask me but the show SLA timeline it was also on the record itself on the actual incident record uh, but I just wanted to show you how you could get through or get to it through the task SLA window. Uh, here we have start. Okay, so it's telling us, okay, priority one, da, 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 met that. And then we have our pause conditions, and it's telling us here what the state was in, the assigned to was Jason, blah, blah, blah. And then let's see here, it's telling us this. Um, that's assigned to Jason. And then when to resume is set as pause conditions are not met. So it's giving us all that right there, um, which is kind of handy. And also you kind of have like this sort of Gantt chart mechanism that you can look at 
um, just to see when, when different things happen. So I, I like, like the layout of this. It's very well done. Okay, and then another thing I wanted to show you was on like on the change table and uh, just wanted to kind of visualize it another way too because here's a requirement that I've seen in the past. Let's just go to our change requests. And the reason why I, I like to use change requests as the example um, is because, you know, we have like this, this little flow right here. So if we wanted to set up an SLA definition just to, you know, track, assess, basically everything except for the authorization process, we could also use a uh, retroactive pause condition if we wanted to. Um, if we wanted to fire it maybe in the implement stage or anything that comes after authorize, we could say, hey, grab the created date on the retroactive start, and then when it goes into authorizes our pause condition, um, but we don't want it to fire until it gets to like scheduled or implement. So I have seen that in the past too. Um, and maybe there's something going on in this phase that there are additional conditions where it, you know, it can't fire here, it has to fire here. So that's another way to, uh, to kind of understand how this is used in, in real life. So I hope that helped with the explanation. Um, as in the past, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, contact me. Uh, my email address is right here on the about uh, section right here, and that's my email address. So if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them my way. My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we've just unlocked the power of ServiceNow.